Hey folks, Eric the Old Jarhead here. Welcome back to the channel. For today's video, we've got a big ponderosa pine. This was over 24 inches in diameter and it's a 17 feet long. It's a big heavy log, but you can see, you know, we were able to roll it into place and that big heavy orange log right can hook you see me using there, boy, that really helps a lot. Those are tough. And it definitely helps me get these logs rolled into place. So we get it positioned into place. Oh, it was a challenge. And then, of course, get her loaded up on the deck and get to work on it. Now, the customer wanted all of his pine slabbed with live edges all the way down. So that makes milling a log like this a little quicker than, you know, building a can to turning it into one buys or something. So in this case, you know, we just had to get it positioned. You can see it's kind of hanging down a little bit there. It was pretty uniform, decent sized log, and it's, it's going to take a little work to get it done, but we'll get it knocked out pretty quick. So let's get it set up and uh, get ready to mill this big guy up. After I got the piss centered, get the log positioned right, of course, it's really just a simple matter of going to town and getting it milled down. Now you notice with the side supports up, it really keeps it moved to the outer edge of what you can mill. And, and I've mentioned before that from the side supports to the outer band guide wheel, it's about 24 inches. So max cuts around 24 inches. And you can see that with it sitting against those side supports, I was right out there at, at the top of this log. So this is a, a good sized log. here I got to get the chainsaw out clean it up a little bit because I'm getting wide right here and I don't want to run those band guide wheels into the bark so we're going to trim a little bit of that off make sure I can get down a little deeper and you can see with that side support there that the shape of the log isn't all the way against the side support at the bottom and that's key I've got two or three inches that I can sneak this over so I get it milled down enough that I'm still going to have clearance but I can push it over those stops on the side. Of course, first we got to get it rolled over and this big guy didn't want to roll that easily. I think this is where the chain turners on the LT50s and LT70s comes into play quite a bit more. These claw type log turners sometimes just don't work quite as well but we'll get it flipped over and you can see the way it's shaped at the bottom once i drop it down there i'll be able to kind of push it over those stops a little bit i'll lower my side supports all the way out of the way or just about all the way out of the way and then i'll be able to push the log over against them and that'll actually extend it out past the stops on the bottom Right there, you can see I kind of pushed it over and I'm gonna move it a little bit more. I want it to be moved as far over those stops as I can get it without running the side of the mill into it. Of course, first I'm gonna push it down a little bit. That's the beauty of these roller tow boards. I can just lift it up and roll the log all by myself. So, you know, you're, you're rolling over 2,000 pounds. Now I'm gonna wiggle it a little bit, kind of push it over those side 
stops. Not the supports, not the hydraulic uprights, right there. Pushing it as much as I can. And you can see I've got those side supports, the hydraulic ones, lowered quite a bit. That's to get them out of the way as much as possible. Push that log over a little further. That's going to give me a wider cut than I would normally have. All right, we're going to knock it down a bit here. Now at this point, the band really wasn't cutting that well, so it was time to change the band. Let's change that band up. Getting dull. Okay. Those bands, you end up throwing them away, here? No. No? No, they get resharpened. Oh. I think that's the band I put on this morning. Pretty it lasts rare. for a long time. Yeah, it's pretty rare that it lasts me that long. These 747s, these new bands I got, they're an inch and a half instead of a thinner inch and a quarter band I have. Mm. Um, but they they do seem to cut flatter and cut longer. So it might be worth switching to. And, um, you know, running from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. on one band, I don't, I've never done that before. Oh. No, I mean, this is all softwood. Yeah. But yeah, I think, um, I'm feeling like these are, I mean, I've got two yesterday, two today. That's awesome. That, mean, that means we ran 850 board feet or more per band yesterday. That's awesome. Get in here. I'm not whacking my head. All right, got the band changed. Ready to go. Let's rock and roll. Get this guy knocked down to the deck. Now I've flipped it over again, and the reason I went ahead and rotated again is you can see that it's smaller on the top side now. That's going to give me a little more room to slip the mill head past.
can see I'm really close right there. And that's the side I've already mixed some off with the chainsaw. Now at this point, I'm too wide to get past the log. So, out comes the chainsaw. Got to do a little whittle work. Now, I've seen some guys cut some really deep wedges out. You really don't have to. If you just find that wide spot, and this is the reason I like the big end towards the front of the mill on big logs. I can just cut off anything that might catch my band guide wheels, get that cut out of the way, and then I can go ahead and take the final cut. And there you have it, folks. We got it slab down. Nothing to it. Thanks for watching. Everybody have a great day. Old Jarhead out.